Welcome to Authors Anonymous with Carolyn Rose Potts and A.R. Mirabelle. And we're going to be talking about inspiration today when it comes to your book. So we broke this down into two categories with a little surprise at the end. So we'll get to that. Um, but the two categories are internal like internal inspiration, and then external. So they sound pretty basic, but there's a lot that can tunnel within those two categories. No, I completely agree. And what we're going to go off of immediately is internal inspirations, meaning things that happen to you in real life, things that you draw inspiration from emotionally, things that trauma. Listen, uh, before we started recording, Carolyn made a, a great point about music and how music can inspire you while not just while you're writing, but even for inspiration strike, you're listening to a good song, it hits you emotionally in the right way, right? It just vibe with you correctly. And then all of a sudden now you have a, a different character dynamic with something that you didn't even know of when you started listening to the song. Yeah, so... And like trauma doesn't have to be anything that's negative either. It doesn't have to be things that are bad. Trauma is just something that left an impression on you. Um, and trauma actually, depending on what the situation is, it can be both either internal inspiration or external inspiration. So one of the things for trauma for internal is, well, actually AR's book in and of itself, he's been writing it since he was 18 now he's 26 and his two characters he talks about like how he used to be and how he is now so just your natural growth and as you're growing up how your mind changes and how you usually mature and you grow up and you get a better sense on usually. things as you're, usually I'm saying yeah uh, and you get a better sense and kind of grip on life those changes um definitely shape the growth of your characters the dialogue um so that's a lot of just internal, just your, your natural growth. Typically books, I know mine took about three years to write. So I was even completely different three years from there. And I went and included stuff from when I was 20 in my book and added it to stuff when I was 18. Um, and for instance, I have one character who is supposed to be very immature. So of course, I'm going to take my 18 year old self and kind of funnel that towards his character development. Whereas my other character is supposed to be very wise and not that I'm that, but I'm older. So of course, I'm going to direct my more uh, learning experiences into that character. So that's kind of a way to divvy up your internal uh, impressions for your book. Yeah, likewise, like basically going off of what, come on, you got to talk when I talk. How we do that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Going off of what Carolyn was saying about my book, with an, an allegory at the end, that's exactly what I did. Not only with the main characters about past and present, but even then, it, it's not a, an accurate representation. It's more just like uh, extreme layers of your own psyche, right? That you kind of just break up and you formulate over different characters. And I did that over periods of times. And not only just characters that exist and like emotions that I really feel, but I guess emotions that you want to feel as well. Um, and just all those personal experiences, I think, really tie in well with the whole character development. Because again, writing in essence is writing what you know. And what do you know more than yourself? And philosophically, what do you know less than yourself? Ooh, 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 ooh <laughs> right? But <laughs> again, these are all things that you can dive into with the writing. So as far as inspiration goes, I think there's a reason why it's numero uno of things that we're talking about. I don't think there's anything more impactful than drawing from your own life experiences and just not only being able to just storytell, right? Just being able to actually just go about it, but also being able to break apart things, as Carolyn said, from a different standpoint. Think back on the things that you did when you were 16 as a 26 year old. How different do you view those situations? That character development that you viewed within yourself, that you saw within like a character of life, like a mirrored reflection, put that in your writing verbatim. People don't know you. They don't know you. And if you, and if your friends do know you, then you can laugh about it at a bar, like, you know, two years later when you're bestseller, right? Just everything that's there, that's all there for you. And I think that segues really well, unless yeah. my co-host wants to say anything about it, anything more about internal. 
Um, well, I, actually, you brought up music and striking emotion that way. So I remember, uh, you know, there's this one band that I listened to or used to listen to at least heavily when I was probably like in high school, early college. Uh, they're called Law Dispute and they write very poetically. Um, but if anybody knows them, you know, their songs are very different than their last song. They have completely different range. So they spark a bunch of different emotions and their, their poems really do tell so much stories. Um, and you don't obviously have to experience their stories that they were saying to connect emotionally with what the singer is trying to convey. Um, I mean, that's just good storytelling in a nutshell. But music can get you obviously feeling riled up or make you cry or make you feel like you want to party. So if you are, at least if you're writing your book and you feel like you need that inspiration, maybe take a break from the writing and listen to some music. If you're trying to write a sad scene, listen to a song that you know that hits that chord for you and you'll be able to get into that momentum, into that mindset and really go with the flow on that. Um, so I think music definitely has a big internal inspiration, um, growth, internal growth has big inspiration, just reflecting on your own life. And I'm sure there's more internal inspiration. I'm just trying to think like, it's hard because it is internal. So I mean, it's going to be different for everybody. But if you just kind of if you meditate and you drop into yourself, sure, you got a whole lot of shit in you that you can work with. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, again, just riffing off that. I mean, there's two points that I thought you brought up really well. One is actually this quote from, well, I can't really say it's a quote as much as just like, I guess, a fact about Einstein, that he would say that he, when he was stuck on a problem, on like an equation, he wouldn't beat his head over the equation. He would go out on a walk or like, you know, play golf or whatever. Suppose he had like a, a vivid sex life. So maybe, he, you know, got some pussy <laughs> or whatever. But for the most part, he just diverted a, a, like to another section of his brain. And as he was doing that, inspiration would hit for the other side. So- mm -hmm. I think that's like pretty valid inspiration, especially when it comes to music. Like sometimes if you're stuck, the best way is, to, is just to sit back, especially, especially when it comes to inspiration. We talked about this, you know, I think just about every time we've talked so far that's been recorded, we talk about introspection and it really is one of the most impactful human elements ever, which again, this, the reason why it's number one, if you can look back on your own experiences and truly introspect and not only your point of views, but the point of views of other people and how maybe when you were 16 and you, you know, stole some candy and the manager was being a real asshole, you viewed him as an asshole. But now you're 26 and you, and you think about it like, hey, you know what? I was the asshole there. And those are yeah. things that are, you literally are just not compatible until you step back from it on a philosophical sense and, you know, divert your brain to another part and just you know, yeah. think about things. And I know I just pulled out my book, Stephen King on writing. Uh, he says okay. in here that he says uh, inspiration or you don't find inspiration or rather you don't find muse, but the muse comes and finds you. And he goes on and says, again, it's not pretty. The muse is not like rainbows and flowery fields of frolicking through wonderful ideas. He's like, no, the muse is ugly. It is banging on your door at 3 a.m. and ripping you from your bed and throwing you into a sleepless night of writing. So it's so much better to wait for that and wait for that to come and take over you than force it, which is kind of which is what AR was saying about, you know, doing something else and finding or letting the inspiration come to you rather than forcing it because your reader might not know you and your personal experiences, but they're going to be able to tell when you're forcing it. They're going to know what sounds real and what sounds like you just wanted to move past this scene because you couldn't fucking get it at the time. So I think um, taking your time, uh, that can be another internal inspiration, but pacing, taking your time, and yeah, even reading some books like this, the Stephen King on writing, like that will help you decipher your own internal muse and your own internal self when it comes to your writing. One of my favorite quotes when it comes to writing, period, is actually by Lemony Snicket. And I know that's not the real name of the author, but his name is Kate. It's the person that wrote the series of unfortunate events. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah, yeah I know you're talking and about. And he, he has a quote that it's, um, there are certain people that can read the back of, no, that can read Art of War by Sun Tzu and just think about it as a military fan fiction. 
while others can read the back of a macaroni and cheese box and unlock the secrets of the universe. Yeah. Everything is about introspective. It's about, about the person and how they view things. When it comes to inspiration, the things that can hit you and the things that motivate you are, they can literally come from anything. Like I, I can't, I think it's maybe Taoism or maybe I, I can't remember which one, but you know, you have to be accepting of the universe. Like you have to have like, you, you know, I guess in like Christian sense, you have to be aware of angels, right? Like however you want to think about it, you have to like understand when things are coming and like pay attention to it. I know bullshit. I, I get made fun of it by my sister often. Mm-hmm. I read like a 350 page book back in the day about making sandwiches. And I wow. apply, I'm not kidding to you, to a lot of things. And you're asking- You guys me, have permission to make fun of A.R. <laughs> Mirabelle in the comments. <laughs> Listen, that should have been self-explanatory. You make fun. I I really I I enjoy getting made fun of. I think of it as like uh, you telling you making fun of me is better than you telling me you love me. It makes me feel it makes me feel warm. It's stuff. real. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'll be telling that to a therapist. Oof. I'll be losing a lot of money on that one. But when it comes to inspiration, the whole sandwich thing. I mean, like one of the main things that I was talking about is that you have to make like a sandwich in a way that you have to layer all the ingredients so they don't overpower one another while still complimenting one another. If you don't think that applies to writing, be more poetic in life. Like that's all <laughs> I have to tell you. Like that's, that's exactly how all things are. And if you apply all those type of like introspective philosophies, again, internal to your writing, it makes your characters phenomenal. But yeah. segueing a little bit into the next point, because I think we beat this one. I, I think the horse is actually just like coughing up blood at this point. <laughs> But <laughs> basically you can get inspiration from anything, including a sandwich. And if you can't, um, take a break. Maybe this ain't for you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're in the wrong shit. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, just take your time with it. Um, I have a good segue as well, but I'll be the better host here and let you continue. <laughs> no, go ahead, please go ahead with the segue. Well, because this only does go a little bit with both internal inspiration and external inspiration. But we mentioned before we started recording that dreams, we were like, oh, is that internal? Is it external? Um, And I think I'm leaning more towards internal because obviously the dreams come from your mind. And maybe you don't see dreams as messages or like hidden whatever, yeah, messages, I guess. Um, They might just be like, oh yeah, I was fucking passed out and I had this weird fever dream or something like that. But no matter what, like those dreams, um, you wake up, sometimes you remember them and they're just so weird. And if you write down your dreams, you might just find a message in them. You might find a plot or at the nevertheless, you have an interesting story. Um, so I think dreams definitely can be an internal influence. Um, if you're somebody who does find dreams fascinating, definitely look to those for inspiration. Cause I mentioned that's exactly Harry Potter. That's the obvious one. She got her entire series based off a dream. Um, yeah. So dreams, I definitely think can be internal. I think they could be a little, external too, um, just in the sense that it is an outside force kind of coming into your mind, kind of like that muse that is banging on your door and ripping your head in the middle of your sleep. So it is something else that's uh, coming to you. Um, No, I completely agree, especially with the whole thing about dreams. I mean, we've talked, I mean, we've talked about dreams, you know, endlessly and the amount of things that you can really pick apart because it's it's literally your, your psyche just defragmentizing your computer and the amount of images and like I guess that's what writing is in general because again you could view any little thing philosophically but if you really look at it in an honest way it doesn't necessarily have to be philosophical at all I can sit back on like the on like a river's brook and see a, a leaf you know turning into brown for the winter and derive so much meaning off that and yeah. the universal actual meaning for that is literally the leaf is turning brown. So and it, either it goes or back could and make forth. a story. Yeah. yeah. It could either be inspirational, like or meta like yeah, metaphoric inspiration, or it could be scene setting inspiration. You could take it literally and then be like, oh, the leaves are like the leaves aren't just turning brown, but you know, they're rolling at their edges and they're falling and waiting to be crunched on. Like, so then you kind of have some setting like you can bring your reader into the setting in a more realistic kind of way. So take a look at your surroundings too for inspiration. And that definitely is a good segue into external inspiration. 
Yeah, it's a great segue. And I'm also just a little spoiler alert of future. You got to talk when I talk. <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry. The sock puppet for the people that are listening on is not working. He's being He's so a rude. drama. Yeah, I'm telling you, he wants like a double wide trailer. He wants craft, food services. He wants everything. Everything. Total drama queen. Anyway, um, when it comes to external inspirations, and a little spoiler alert for what I'm going to be talking about in like 10 minutes, it actually... I'm going to drop a little summary for a book I'm going to write probably in like two years that the entire inspiration from that hundred percent came external. And I'm going to dive into like how, I mean, I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to be a little brief about it because I can talk about it forever as with anything, I'm but uh, definitely keep, keep listening on for that. But as far as external inspirations, kind of like the, the, the thesis of what ex- external inspiration means is anything obviously as denoted by the name that happens external world events religious things that happen within a community things that happen to your friends which is a, again another huge inspiration but which mm. again why it's so close to number one because external i mean we are people of community so a bee for example i know it's gonna sound weird for a second but a bee can literally see the view like the world through pollination like it can see a flower in ways that humans cannot even perceive, but humans are just like colored blobs to them. Whereas humans can't tell shit about a flower, but we can perceive micro trans, like, you know, if a person lifts their eyebrow a little bit, it's like, oh, is he angry at me? Mm-hmm. There is just things that you would perceive differently about the universe. And when it comes to external, there's nothing better than humans because we just study. Even if you're not like a person that's into psychology, just at, for survival, you have to study other people's emotions. So oh, external yeah. is a huge, is a huge one. Um, yeah, I mean, like you said, taking inspiration from your friends. There's this one guy, uh, and I want to find him on Instagram because I actually do want to give him a shout out. This because I we talked before, and I asked him where he got his inspiration for his books, and it's kind of it's like a crime thriller type of thing. So his name is Dory underscore Martin nineteen. And he's a cop and he's dealt with a lot of people that had obviously so much trauma, no matter what it was, whether it was like severe, like hate crimes, brutal cases, arresting people, like everything crime related, this guy has experienced it. So he took a lot of inspiration from his job and wrote a book um, or multiple books about it. Uh, so whether they don't, it's not even like you have to be close friends with them. Well, that's great because then you can probably pick apart their brain a little bit more um and solidify them as a character or something but you can just take even your work or anything else that you do uh and use that as for inspiration as well yeah 100 percent. and it goes a little bit into back into like internal but you know i went to school even though it's not what i'm doing currently about for engineering and a lot of my inspiration comes from just the inception of technology like that's a fascinating idea to me um little side note like i one of my favorite things i love about avatar is how it, it, it explains kind of like the their evolution of technology from like a, a magical standpoint like the type of things like that just intrigue me and it goes really well into world building because again these are all things that are external if you develop a crazy magic society or like let's say that you whatever inspiration comes from let's say that you take the personal experience of you uh finding love with your dog or some bullshit like that not that that's bullshit i mean like you know <laughs> you know dogs that's a problem. Are yeah yeah but something like that let's say let's say you take inspiration from that and you write about um a dog that has superpowers like clifford but he's can like talk telepathically to his owner and he actually has like a lot of daddy issues or whatever the fuck right so not only do you have to think about the internal of that how does your main character deal with that type of emotional stability or instability but how does the world deal with that yeah no let's that's a that, great point let's say that you create a superman character that's awesome sure he jumps over you know buildings and faster than a bullet you know like oh my god is it a bird no my god it's geico i'm saving 500 dollars <laughs> of my insurance whatever it is right um <laughs> all the above <laughs> yeah you know all the above whatever that inspiration is you have to understand and you have to always consider like how the world also represents it there are going to be people immediately taught like going off the whole superman reference they will immediately go off and it's like all right well that guy's awesome there's going to be people that immediately goes off like all right well that you know what happens if he just decides to not be on our side 
that's our ass. Mm. And you have to think about those both compliments. And, <laughs> and again, Carolyn brought it up really well with the internal point. But again, I think this plays a little bit into both aspects because let's say that you have two point of views. You have one person that, you know, like philosophical, like, you know, philosoph, philosophizes, <laughs> philosophical, yeah, philosophical, yeah. uh, thinks deeply, thinks deeply <laughs> about shit, right? A person, you know, that goes and looks into like a, a reflection in the, in the water and like actually really thinks about it, like it means something. And then a person just views it and just like, you know, skips a rock to it. Like, who cares, right? Not only can you draw inspiration from that and drive stories from each side, but you can incorporate both. And mm. when you have that dichotomy in a story, I think that's really impactful because you're showing, again, that you have a story that isn't just developed around a character, but it's an actual world that you're building and you're inviting people into it. Yeah, I thought you brought up a few good points too when you were saying like about a religion or technology, um, aside from world building, but like just with inspiration, whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction, obviously like political books have been skyrocketing, obviously since the 2016 election up until now. So that people take that kind of inspiration happening and run with that, whether it's, uh, and then of course you can always make it, make it fictional and put your own spin on it, but your environment that you're growing up in, and that can become very personal uh, or it can be on a broader spectrum too, just depending what kind of tone you want for your book. Uh, you know, what, what's your inspiration and do you want to like, what's the word, uh, macro or micro? So mm. yeah, your inspiration can also be put onto different scale levels as well. And note that inspiration can be good for the main plot as well as subplots too, because you really should have a subplot happening in your book along with the main point just to add density as well. Um, yes, and going back to, to, to trauma, which is internal, uh, the way you perceive and the way you handle it is internal, but the trauma itself is external. And they set the tone for stories as well. And like I said, trauma doesn't always have to be bad. For instance, trauma can be something like a completely change in your career. It's just something that's totally different to you. So maybe your character is somebody who used to be an accountant and now they're a private investigator. And because maybe that's what happened to you or a friend that you know. So you kind of just look at what's going on. If you like, or if you get too stuck on yourself, you're really introspecting and you start to have like an existential crisis, like maybe that's not the route to always go, but then take a look at what else is going on, whether it be the world, whether it be your friends, whether it be like your, yeah, like I said, your career, or maybe it is something horrible. And like, that can be very therapeutic too. Maybe something really bad did happen to you. And then writing about it, not only is inspirational, but I think it's healthy, uh, in my opinion, to get that out there. So a few different ways to look at uh, those kinds of inspirations. Yeah, and to kind of go into my personal kind of process when I make a character, when I make a, a, char a character originally, it's usually not based off anybody that I know, but usually when I make the character and I have an idea of how I want to convey them, there are certain people in my life or people that I've seen on the internet or wherever it comes from, like I said, anything external, right? It doesn't even have to be a person. It can be an animal, right? When I see those emotions that I like, then I start incorporating those into the character and then they become fuller to me. And to me, a lot of characters like went that route when I, you know, I'm not that I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm not that cool. When I originally thought of my first characters of Zayko and Jid, I didn't know that they were reflections of myself. Mm. I just thought of the characters. And then when I understood, again, introspection, everything connects. When I started to sit back and realize what they actually meant and what they meant to me. And if I can be completely honest, when I started writing certain scenes, I really f started to feel those emotions like vividly. And it started to take me back to the type of traumas, like Carolyn said, that inspired those type of events. And I would really went, go through them and I would go through his emotions, I'm telling you. And it's, there's nothing more cathartic, honestly, and just like in a, almost in a, in a therapeutic way. But in a writing sense, I don't think there's anything more passionate. What we talked about in our first episode was just talk, really that. Well, I can't say it was about that, but one of the things that I ended the episode with was the idea of passion. Mm -hmm. And if you have that in your writing, I think that conveys, and that, I think that moves mountains by itself. If you really believe in what you're writing, and not only that, but you have the experience to back it up, internal or external. I think that's really valid. And I think that really adds a lot to your book and your writing in general. 
Oh my gosh, no, definitely having that passion. But if you are one of those people that can write something that's never happened to you and find a way to do it perfectly, then you probably can skip over this whole podcast because then you can come on and teach us because you probably have it much better on lockdown. We'll but- have that next episode. We'll talk about that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, no, but typically, yeah, it's definitely good to just to write what you know. Uh, also for external inspiration, you can take in your own hobbies to account. So for instance, like I've studied numerology. So in my book, I make numerology a heavy topic in my book because that's something that I'm very comfortable with and something that I'm passionate about. And so it adds that density to my book, like AR was talking about. Maybe you're a writer, but you also have a passion for basketball. Like your main character could be a basketball player. And then you can bring in that actuality to your story. Like I could never, I could, I could write about basketball, but like I'd have Google open on the next tab and being like, what does it mean when he shoots from, I don't, I don't know what a three-pointer is. I have no idea what a three-pointer shoot is. Is that even a thing in basketball? You know I don't it's know. A thing. So, you know it's a thing. But like, okay, you're standing in like the middle of the court and you shoot it and it's no, three that's points. a half court. That's a half court. Now, I'll be honest with you. I played basketball in my uh, middle school and listen, there is no sport that was worse than in my entire life. I'm decent when it comes to other things, but listen, I, I blocked my own teammate one time in seventh grade. <laughs> Hand of God. I, did, I know I just did the cross with the opposite side. That means I'm the devil or something and shit like that. Like a six six is going to pop up on my forehead. Right. <laughs> but I got CGI, motherfucker. You ain't seen that shit. Uh Um, (laughs) but, and ironically to play devil's advocate to what Carolyn was just saying, when it comes to that whole inspiration and when it comes to external and writing things that you don't know, you always have to remember that really, even though you, I I guess just like life, even though you haven't experienced something, it doesn't mean you can't empathize with it. That's true. Especially with, you know, like, um, I I know I'm going to start... I don't even know why I'm going to go into this, but like everything that's happening with like the gender fluidity and all those things and like the, you know, transgender and all the, even if mm. you aren't doing that, you can empathize with it. You remember being 13 and confused about your shit. Right. Empathize right. with another person. I mean, that's it. Simple shit. So that's true. Let, let's say, especially that we're both sci-fi writers. If we ever get to the point where we're writing from the point of view of an alien, we're not aliens, <laughs> but we can, you know, we can empathize with certain things that they might feel. Let's say that the alien is coming to earth. Maybe you can empathize with being a loner. I mean, who can't empathize with that at some point in their life or may, maybe being the center of, of, a, of, a, of attention when you don't want to be, or right. maybe seeking that attention. Like there, there's so many elements that you can just go off about the prologue right. in my book is about a person experiencing death. I haven't fucking died, hmm. but I've experienced regret. And that's what I wrote about. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, it's finding things that you don't even realize are inspiration, like regret. Usually, like, people are not inspired by regret. You actually have, like, the opposite feeling, which is, like, nobody look at me. I don't ever want to talk about this again, or you don't want to think about it, but then it's all you think about. And, like, little do you know, like, the the lesson that you learned from it, or, again, all those feelings that come with it, that's the inspiration. It's not like inspiration will come to you and be like, I am your inspiration, and it's so known, and it's so bold. Sometimes, like, yeah, you have to kind of think about all the different angles when something happens. And it could be something super, super simple, or it could be something like traumatic, a big impression and a big experience. Um, and then deciding whether you want it to be, yeah, meta- philosophical or whether you want it to be literal, like that's up to you and your writing style and your story. But really like your inspiration is... I think there's probably some kind of code or some type of like math for it, but I think inspiration is what you're passionate about, what motivates you, and probably also what you despise because hating something or having strong negative feelings towards something is a huge driving factor in a lot of things. Why do you hate it? What can you actually learn from it? What happened to make you hate it? So I think those are like three key points. Um, and they can either be divided up into internal or external. Keep yeah. an open mind. <laughs> uh, that's, actually, that's actually a pretty good segue into what I want to talk about the inspiration for the, the random book that I had. And if you have ins- any inspiration that you want to draw out from like your writing, I'd love to hear it. That actually be great if we can kind of go back and forth. But it, the whole thing that we were talking about with inspiration, it made me think of this plot line that I developed between two gods and the inspiration for it came from not only an internal inspiration of a relationship basically, but it came from an external inspiration from like a philosophical thought. 
So the thought was that humans in a general, we're always looking to ourselves like, like, like we don't know, right? When you're born, there's no guidelines of life. So the entire question, one of the biggest questions that, I mean, the two biggest questions of life, if you ask me, are probably, is there a God and why am I here? I mean, they're, they go right, right along inside each other. I think any person that has been alive for longer, like that has thoughts, has, slight, has had that thought cycle in their head at least once. So yeah. when you, so it made me think of like, all right, like our idea of gods are people that are the opposite of that, right? Typically we know nothing because we have no idea what's going on, but gods know, what, know what's going on. So they have an idea of like why they're there. They, they, have, they understand their purpose. So I thought, what would be a plot line where gods actually don't know what was going on? Mm. They're just as confused as we are. Like life is life. They're just as fucking lost as they are. They've been long for longer. Maybe they have immortality X, Y, Z, but they, they just don't know the same way that we don't know. So yeah. I took that inspiration external and put, put it with an internal thing of a breakup between basically a toxic relationship. I'm not going to dive into that, but what I drew inspiration from that was that when the things start kind of kicking on, because these two forces, these two gods have been like literally how I view the, the, the story starting off was that it would be the big bang. And as universes start to coalesce and like the universe starts to like form and whatnot, two balls of energy form. And that's what they are basically. And then like it zooms out and the stars become like, you know, like neutrons and the neutrons turn into blood cells and the blood cell zooms out into like a person. And then it's like a person at the park and then like the story goes off from that. Um. And how the reason like I, I viewed all those things is because as the story progressed, you have like that external inspiration but the internal inspiration of how the character that happens is they start trying to understand why the universe is the way that it is. And when they start understanding more elements of it that they don't know, they start considering who is the actual problem in the universal relationship is it me or is it them your inspiration i'm sorry it is very similar to the one that i was gonna say because when you're talking it just sounds a lot like the unknown and then also when you're saying you know who is the problem here is it them is it me is it no one is it everyone is it both of us like for my book uh there's like again those those two main points there's a there's the government and then there's civilians so the government starts, long story short, the government starts bombing the civilians. So I took inspiration from the uh, mentality of fight or flight, that your biological instinct, whether to fight back or to flee. So some of my characters, you know, fought back and they stayed uh, living in the woods and hiding out and fighting back the government. Another part of my civilians, they flew or fleed, whatever, uh, to this place called Creation. Fled. Fled. And fled that's it. I swear I can write. <laughs> and Creation, um, you know, was like where people had fled to. And so I brought in the aspect of fight or flight. But then I bring in another concept, which is, well, what if we just stayed? Because that is another response that is not talked about. And it's not as common in our fight or flight biological response. If fight flight and then we have frozen is what it's called when you stay in place and you can't think and you don't know what to do and you you literally freeze in place it's like a deer caught in headlights they're like the only mammal that probably react that way more than humans humans i think most of us fight and then flight i could be wrong about that but there is some i would argue the exact opposite so but those are the like the two main ones but so one point i bring up is well what if we just stayed and i don't want to give too much of my book away because it's not out yet Oh, but it but, will be motherfuckers check out i know soon -ish. inside out yeah that's the other thing like inside and out was like another theme uh you know do we yeah are we fighting for ourselves are we fighting to change ourselves and then are we remaining with the government do we become part of the government um or if we just stay and i think when you choose to stay that the change has time to answer itself that change will be revealed sometimes you don't have to do anything and life will take care of itself that was one of my inspirations, a biological response in humans was one of my themes in my book and how it's played out in different people in different scenarios. I don't know why, but you just inspired me. There was like, a, I mean, this is the inspiration episode, right? So we are right on track. <laughs> you understand. But, but um, 
it actually made me think of like a poem that I wrote like a while ago. Well, just like I'm not gonna say the whole line, like the whole poem, but there was a line that that was um does a flower ever dream as a seed of a sprout? Hmm. Where's that from? I know that I've heard that. I wrote it. Oh, you wrote it. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, maybe I wrote it. Is that from your uh, your poem, the B one? Not poem, but that like not word? the not the poem one, but I'm sure you've read it because you went through my shit, you fuck. But I know uh, that I read it. <laughs> um yeah well that that poem that line like what that meant for me I mean like again it's one of those things I just literally like, looked at a flower I was like and again when you read allegory of the end out now motherfuckers will suck <laughs> out now by it but out, when you read allegory of the end and like the the prologue a lot of the inspiration literally came from like just me looking at nature you know mm. I might or might have not been on certain influences might or might have not been but probably but hey 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 <laughs> i know nothing officer but <laughs> when i i would just like look at nation i was just like thinking like you see like a flower sprouting it's like do you think a flower is exciting excited about being a flower like when you're a kid and you want to be an astronaut you become you become an astronaut you're excited do you think a flower is excited or it just is like that's just what it does like it just it just sprouts yeah Again, again, weird thing to talk about, but it's all inspiration. Like if you just sit back and really think about these things and you let yourself dive into it, you don't be scared of how weird you, yeah, <laughs> like you that's feel, a good point. you know what I mean? But you really just go into it. No fear. The amount of things that you can pull out from that, that abyss, that darkness. Yeah. Just beautiful. Um, I think that's like, go ahead. No, please go ahead. No, yeah, because I was going to say it does segue into like other people's inspiration since we were talking about our own. And we are on the same vibe. Go ahead. I know, always. It's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have, because I posted one of these things where I thought this would be a good topic is because I was genuinely curious what people got inspiration from their books. So I mean, for people who see this on YouTube, I won't read the whole post, but I put an excerpt of my book on my Instagram and the caption was, you know, the excerpt and then the pillowcase. <laughs> And this is, I don't know if you can see it, the pillowcase, but it was something that I drew when I was about five. And the excerpt was about astral projecting. And my pillowcase is of me standing in a field of flowers, dreaming about a field of flowers. And my caption is, Carolyn's dream, I dream of dreaming, or what do you dream? So it was oh, like this whole is. inception thing. So that is, and I found this pillowcase when I was 17. And obviously I drew it when I was five, you can even tell. Um, so I was curious. So I put that on my Instagram and I was like, how do people get their inspiration? Is it internal? Is it external? Or is it neither of the above? So I want to read through some of these replies because they got some people talking, which is always a good thing. Um, this one actually I thought was really cool. He said, uh, all right, his name is postmodern underscore pulp, pulp underscore fiction. Postmodern underscore fiction, whatever she said. <laughs> yeah, hey, what's up? Do you know him? Nah, but you Do you know, follow him? God bless him. You know what I'm saying? Bless um, yeah. I seen that maybe like mm, once. Once. But mm. it is a, uh, it's, it's one of the classics, definitely. Wait, um, what, class? Wait, what are you talking about? What classics? Pulp Fiction, that movie. It's a classic. What? You know I've seen that movie. What are you talking about? I think you're talking about the, the, the author. Have I seen him before? I was like, yeah, no, I haven't seen him before. Oh, no. About, you know, like, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to read what he replies. Anyways. I believe that my writing, this poor guy, I think that my writing is a big culmination of my experiences as a person, as a person with schizophrenic, schizo, schizoaffective disorder, an experience that formally started four days after my 15th birthday, but more likely when I was born. I also have theories about events, uh, both in my life and in everybody else's, which my writing predicted. He kind of gave other people inspiration. He took this whole topic and it. he would just have these ideas, uh, according to him, he'd have like these thoughts, which I guess are inspiration of themselves, where they came from, I don't know. I don't even think he knows. Uh, and he would write these stories and he said that they actually predicted or foreshadowed events in either his own life or in other people's life. So that wasn't a response I was not expecting to get um so major props to him so Honestly, yeah mo postmodern underscore pulp underscore fiction he is the epiphany of inspiration and we should have had him on this show this talk right now because i think he could have some a whole backwards point of view about it that would be really great 
Well, if I can be honest, not to steal his thunder, but that, that slightly did happen to me with Allegory of the End. So the whole prologue thing is in a black hole. At the time that, I mean, we talked about at 18, when I had the idea, we didn't know that much about black holes and I just thought about it how I thought. And then two years later, like a sign, like a paper came out that proved what I thought about basically could have happened. And I remember when that happened, I was just like, yeah, what's up? I was doing like the dance in my room. That, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like one of those things that ahead. nobody believes you. You're like, I swear. Yeah. Man, there's, no, that always, was like there's that. always things like that. God. Yeah. Well, even with, like, I know I told you before, like, part of my book, people becoming part AI, and then COVID happened, and everybody, like, staying inside and technology being on the rise. And then also with um, fucking, who's that guy? Don't swear on the podcast. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my god i'm blanking it'll come to me um but somebody else's that i thought was cool they said i want to find it oh yeah my best writing is always a reflection uh or thought in my life and then he also said yeah mad props to those who write so well things removed from themselves so like he is saying just a thought you like you said that um part in your poem about it does a flower get excited to grow he would take a thought like that and write a whole story that was kurt castle is his name kurt castle which is actually okay. insane if you can have one thought and then have a book grow from that rather than just like multiple thoughts or maybe an idea then your characters and making it blend together it's kind of like his idea could be like i like hot dogs and then boom there's a book like so yeah inspiration like we said can be really small or it could be something as big as like the other guy who said, you know, he would write things and they ended up predicting other parts of his or somebody else's life. So yeah. inspiration is a very tricky thing, mostly because there is no one label to it. Um, we're a little over the time limit, but God damn, I just really liked what you just said right now. That is so true. I mean, I think the reason I love it so much, that idea, is because I'm just so not that. Every idea I've ever had, I mean, as you have seen, is like me taking a whole bunch of shit and putting it together in like a pot. Adding yeah. a little spices, you know what I mean? A little hot sauce, what's that? Mm -hmm. But um, I, you got, I gotta say, I actually really, I really love that idea and like admire it a lot and respect it of taking one solid idea and running home with it. It's like, that, it's yeah. like, instead of being the avatar you're like say you know you just fuck with water for years and take that yeah. to its limits you know what i mean and think about I, I how deep you can go into that yeah i mean blood bending and spirit bending oh my god but oh my god. <laughs> um <laughs> no but like i mean to, to be completely honest it's that is a fascinating idea to me i just when i was in the on the plane i, re I like watched like a part of a movie called adaptation and I mean, just, I'm not even going to go to that movie because it's fucking crazy, but the basis of the, of the thing was it was screen play, uh, screenwriter trying to adapt a movie. Well, a movie about a book about orchids. And it was such an interesting thing because every, like all the industry people, all his friends were telling him, it was like, oh, you know, make it per like, say, basically saying what we were saying. Oh, you got to, you know, make a love interest, you know, write what you know, mm. you know, orchids, basically everything we, we just said. But what this screenwriter was 100% on the money about, what he was dead set on was making it about orchids. No character development, no anything like that, but he wanted to focus specifically on like, he wanted to make it reflective of actual life. Sometimes you go through it and you don't know shit. You're not any different than you were in the beginning. And like that, like, and just, he was trying to uh, uh, elaborate on that philosophical wow. just principle right there. And again, as far as marketability goes, and we're being completely honest, I don't know how far you're going to go with that, but as far as artistic, believe yeah. me, you have my vote. I'm for yeah. that. That's awesome. That's an awesome. That could be idea. another podcast. I can name a bunch of authors that have broken the traditional don't of writing and angel Valdez. and that i mean you know. ar meet a bond who's angel Valdez? LOL. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have People to edit that out explain. <laughs> yeah but um so inspiration internal external macro micro take your time and be open-minded those are my notes yeah as far as my final thoughts about everything is really again it's probably gonna have to be my end cap for like every episode intra-fuck inspection mm -hmm. 
the amount of things i mean like dude and listen i'll definitely fall into that category of being a loser and like overthinking about absolutely everything the things that i could write about that happened today i mean if you just pay attention to the things around you like the beauty and the horror that you will see is literally endless um yeah and on that slightly depressive note <laughs> have a great day <laughs> have a great day check with us next week when we have our next episode we are going to be talking about world this is when you say building building world building <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo. uh and i'm i'm going to be floored for that episode I actually should have yes. a physical copy of my book at the time. So I'm going to be doing my whole little show and dance about that. No offense. And I mean, Carolyn, you know, everything that she's talked about as far as the AI and her whole book and inside and out, we get, we're going to have a great time talking about world building. So check out for that. You got to talk when I talk. So you'll learn. He'll learn. <laughs> he'll learn. He'll learn. The sock puppets are still in learning. They're learning acting. It's a whole thing. It's a process. It's a mess. They're divas. But we are getting better people. Te prometo. <laughs> this is authors anonymous check with us next tuesday peace out <laughs>